25-year-old Stephanie Browett knows she possesses incredible strength. But it's a bittersweet truth born from tragedy. 18 months ago, the White Island volcano disaster in New Zealand killed her father, sister and 20 others. Stephanie was critically injured, suffering dreadful burns. Now, after many long and painful battles, there's great news. Her recovery is exceeding expectations. She's fighting fit. And there's a special group of heroes Stephanie wants to thank for that. When I'm boxing, I just really let everything go, let all of my emotions, let all of my anger, let everything out. Stephanie Browett is punching through the pain of the past 18 months. Too much. Amazing, even herself, at how far she's come. Seven, six, five, four, six, two, one. Beautiful. <laughs> <A little extra. laughs> I was very severely injured, very severely burnt, and I knew that, I could tell, because I knew my body was shutting down on me. She was among dozens of tourists visiting New Zealand's White Island in December 2019, when the volcano roared to life. Jesus. That's terrifying. And this is what rescuers were confronted with as they flew into a cauldron of gas and steam. A catastrophic eruption that authorities should have seen coming. It killed 22 people, including her father Paul and sister Crystal, and left Stephanie in a coma for three weeks with burns to 70% of her body. My dad and my sister are always on my mind, especially when it gets tough. I wish they were by my side. I wish they could give me that push in person. Um, I know my sister, she would tell me to get on with it and keep going and to not let anything stop me. What would they think of your boxing? My sister would probably think she could do better than me. <laughs> <laughs> she was always a hard hitter. <laughs> so how's it feel? It's feeling a lot better. It's not as restricted. Not the 25-year-old's rehabilitation is a battle she's chipping away at every day. Her hand therapist, Edward Antonov, tracks even the tiniest improvements and they all add up. It's um, two degrees more, okay. four degrees more, six degrees more and six degrees more. OK, yep. I'm happy with that. Yeah, well done. But her remarkable recovery could never have begun without a lifeline from a special group of strangers who donated their skin. I received skin from up to 12 people, a dozen. What does that gift mean to you? That gift means everything to me. They gave me my life. Every day I think of that and how my life was dependent on that donation being available. Stephanie, how are you going? I'm not doing too bad. Those life-saving skin graft surgeries were the first of numerous operations here at Melbourne's Alfred Hospital. Stephanie's plastic surgeon, Dr Stephen Salerno, has been vital in helping her skin heal. These photos, I think, are about six months apart. Um, and they're, they're a lot, you can see here, a lot more, there's a lot more purple and a lot thicker scarring. Um, and as it's progressing, the scarring's getting a little bit less coloured. But a shortage of skin donors in Australia, when she first arrived at the Alfred, meant doctors had to rely on donations from the other side of the world. A lot of my skin donors came from the United States and that's become a huge problem that's constantly happening in Australia. We had the Black Saturday bushfires mm -hmm. where they had to order skin from overseas. We had the barley bombings and we had a skin shortage then. So we need donor skin readily available. At the moment, there's about 1,800 people on the organ transplant waiting list, and some of those people will die waiting for an organ. Um, that's the reality of it. It's often forgotten that skin is our largest organ, and just as crucial as all the others. Catherine, would you be able to bring that in for me? The demand for donations is even greater during the coronavirus pandemic according to Lucinda Barry, the CEO of Donate Life. She says closed borders and packed intensive care units are making the critical process a logistical nightmare. We've seen a 16% decrease in the number of uh, organ donors, which has meant 
a 12 per cent decrease in the number of people receiving a transplant. And I think to put that into perspective, about 150 less people received a kidney transplant last year. Steph, you've already achieved so much. What's next on your hit list? I'm hoping to get back to driving. Yeah, is that on the horizon? It is. That's one of my biggest goals, I think, just so I can get back my independence. Mm -hmm. With so much still ahead of her, Stephanie is a proud example of the legacy we could all leave through organ donation. What would you say to the donors' families? I don't think anything I could say would express my gratitude <laughs> enough. There are no words. I couldn't be more thankful. I couldn't be more grateful. This is one of the most rewarding and most beautiful decisions you could ever make. You're giving someone the gift of life and that's one of the most precious things you could ever do. How can it get better than that? Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.